Star has genuinely changed every aspect of my life. And maybe I shouldn't say Star, but th these teachings are life-changing for sure. So what was your experience meeting me first time and off the call? It's Marissa, okay. right? Yeah. Okay, cool. It was so much different than talk therapy. Welcome, everyone. I have a very special surprise for you guys today. I brought one of my coaching clients, Marissa. It's Marissa, okay. right? Yeah. Okay, cool. We've been working for years together. Marissa, tell me everything you want to tell me. Oh my gosh. And today, I'm actually going to teach you how to self-help yourself. And I will tell you how you recognize a good coach, therapist, that can help you. So Marissa did therapy actually before doing coaching with me for 15 years. And she didn't get any practical tools. She spent a lot of money. How much did she spend? I don't even know. Like it's around. Way, way too much. Like more than a thousand? Oh, yeah. More than 5,000? More than like tens of thousands of dollars. So she spent for so long. She spent more than $10,000. How much did it help you? I think that it, I thought it was helping me in the time. Uh, during the time and then after a while I was like then why do I have to keep coming back like week after week like, yeah how is this helping you know just want to say we didn't have coaching in a while she's basically done with coaching I'm healed <laughs> I don't like the word healed <laughs> but she's not currently my client anymore she's been my client for probably a year or more we did like a year and a half I year and say. a half yeah on and off and I gave her the tools she practiced mm -hmm. she's on her own now I don't make her dependent on me. If she wants a refresher call, she can come, mm -hmm. but she doesn't have to. My clients can come and go whenever they want to. I'm going to ask Marissa some questions about our coaching. In addition, while I'm asking her about our coaching process, I'm going to tell you the insights of it so you can teach yourself those tools so you can improve your mental health, have better relationship with your emotions, how to move forward in your life, how to overcome procrastination. Be yourself practically and do the things that you value. All right? So let's go. Love it. Nice. So Great Marissa. Intro. <laughs> My first question is, where did you find me? I found you through TikTok. <laughs> and I was um, obsessively researching how to fix a broken heart, how to stop obsessively thinking, um, what's wrong with me that I think this way. And then your videos were popping up when I searched those things. And I was like, everything he's saying, I'm relating to and it's, I'm understanding. And I know that this is a value to me. So then I booked a coaching call with you. What made you decide to do a coaching session with me? Well, I was in talk therapy for 15 years, like half my life, basically. And I was like, this is not helping, I don't think. <laughs> like, I just keep going and going and I'm not feeling any better. Like, nothing's changing in my life. I'm getting the same results over and over again. And I need to do something different. So that's when I was like, maybe I should try a life coach. And I was always intimidated by the idea of a life coach because I was like, your life must be in shambles to get a life coach. But, and I was like, I'm not there yet. I don't need a life coach. But after watching so many of your videos, I was like, I think this will be beneficial. So let me just try it. And after one call with you, I just kept coming to you week after week for a long, long time until I was like, you know, I think I can take these practices and do it on my own. And now I'm here. How long did you do therapy? You said over 10 years? 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. What did those therapists tell you was the measure of success? Did they even tell you that there was no. a measure of success? Not did they I tell you that the relief that you get from the therapy is the measure of success? Yeah. See you kind again, of? See you again next week. Let's sit on that and then I'll see you next week. And I was just like, every time my therapist would be like, go take a bubble bath because this is going to be really heavy for the next week. And I was just like... <laughs> That was your practice? Take a bubble bath? I don't want it to be heavy. I want it to be easy. I want life to be fun and easy. Did they give you practice tools? Read these To books. practice during the week? Read, read Besides self, reading books. Read self-help books. No tools. Take they, bubble bath. They baths. didn't even tell you to meditate. No, no meditation. This is incredible. She spent over 10000 It couldn't be even... Just... Meditation would I would have been a guy. Okay, so let's go to the first meeting that we had, right? I still remember it. It's Marissa, okay. right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Marissa, tell me everything you want to tell me. Oh my gosh. I still remember it. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So what were your expectations? Did you have any expectations before meeting me? Um, I was hoping that you would save my life. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was hoping that you would change everything. I was hoping that, I guess an expectation that I had for myself was like, I expect myself to be really open and honest. And like, I'm just going to tell you everything that I think and that I feel. Because talk therapy, I don't know if it works for some people. For me, I just felt like I, it was like a revolving door. Like I just kept going around and around and around and like talking about the same things and nothing was getting better. So I think for me, I was like, I'm just going to come completely myself and open and be honest and then see how this can benefit me in the long run. I love that. You know what I just realized? What? Because I have all my sessions recorded, I probably have your first session recorded. I have it You have it? I do. So you will see actually some clips of our first (laughs) session in this video, which is really cool. Okay, the first thing that's coming up for me is that I'm scared to tell you um, what's on my mind because I feel like you're going to be like, that's just your brain and blah, 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 you know? Well, don't worry about it. I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> this is good when we like save these because I, I do record. So my clients have recordings of the yeah, sessions. I have it too. What was your experience meeting me first time and of the call? It was so much different than talk therapy because I was expecting to tell you my entire life story and how I grew up and my childhood and my traumas and all this stuff. And you were like, what what do you value? And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I don't even care about what I value right now. I just want to feel better. And you're like, we'll get to that later. What do you value? <laughs> so that's when it started. And it was just, I just remember it being so much different than talk therapy. Okay, great. Yeah. So I want to give you some insights what I do in my first session. There's one really important exercise that I do in my first session with my clients, which is, you can say it, value garden <laughs> it's the value garden exercise the <laughs> I value still have mine. yes my you, first one I ever we can did. maybe like you can send yeah. it to me we put it up on screen yeah each part of the garden is a different subject okay so you can have tomatoes you can have carrots i hate tomatoes w- well then we don't do tomatoes no <laughs> smoke um you can do trees you can do strawberries that's my favorite food me too uh, nice you can do peaches Whatever, salad, whatever, but each is its own subject. And I'm going to tell you the subject in a second, all right? The value garden exercise was created by Mark Freeman. He's amazing. He's an amazing mental health coach. He wrote, You Are Not a Rock. He recovered from OCD 12 years ago. I love that book, by the way. You should read it. Great book. And I added to the value garden the seven categories. So that's actually not something that he did. Mm -hmm. Maybe you knew that or not. Yeah. But I put like seven categories on the value garden so people have an easier time to find their values. Mm. The reason why we're doing the value garden exercise is everything that you're coming to me for, which is could be anxiety, procrastination, thoughts of not being good enough, intrusive thoughts, any compulsive behaviors, even heartbreak, anything in relationships, will be better through this exercise and in addition it will give you so much clarity because a lot of people who come to me including marissa are so stuck in the head because they've been obsessed with the problem they've been obsessed with the issue they've been obsessed with finding the issue they've been obsessed with techniques that other coaches gave them to tell them yeah, you have to spend time on shadow work or go back in the past and trying to figure out what your inner child did back there or how you got hurt, right? <laughs> so they stay on that problem, spend time on it, and then your brain's like, oh, Marissa, you love fixing problems. You love fixing trauma. Let me give you more trauma because the brain doesn't actually know what you like, so to say, and what you don't like. It only knows what you spent your time and energy on. So it actually thinks that you like what you spent your time and energy on. And if intrusive thoughts, so to say, come in, which are only intrusive because you engage with them, and maybe thoughts about the relationship or the mm-hmm. ex, you're like, oh yeah, I have to figure this out. What about maybe he doesn't love me? Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm too insecure. The brain's like, oh, you love thoughts about insecurity. You love thoughts about your ex because you're engaging with it. The brain is like an algorithm. It gives you more things that you spent your time on. Exactly like the TikTok algorithm. Whatever you watch on your uh-huh. For You page, the TikTok gives you more. It's his brain, same thing. When Star told me that for the first time, like, oh, the, you're telling the brain that it loves this and it'll give you more of that. I was like, oh, that's so true. Because every time I solve a problem or I fix an issue, there's a new one that comes up. 
It's exactly. like a never ending story. I'm yes. Like, because the brain's like, oh no, oh no, she fixed one. Let me give her more. She loves fixing. That's it. Remember the house? I don't know if you remember the house analogy that I told you a lot. I okay, so the house analogy is this. Imagine you have a lot of chairs in your house. There's your full house is full of chairs, right? You have a house full of chairs. You're like, I can't even invite people anymore. I have too many chairs. I need to get rid of these chairs. Mm -hmm. And now you're throwing chairs out the window. You throw chairs out the uh, door on the lawn. The brain looks at this and only understands your behavior. Remember this. The language of the brain is your behavior. So the brain looks at this and it's like, Marissa loves throwing chairs out the house. The brain doesn't know, oh, we want to get rid, we want to clean up the chairs, we want to get rid of the chairs. The brain only understands, oh, Marissa is taking the chair and throwing out the house. She must love So chairs. she must love throwing chairs. That's her <laughs> hobby. That's her sport. That's her Olympic discipline. She, she wants to be a pro at it. And then the brain's like, no, uh, she's running out of chairs soon. Let me go to Ikea, build some chairs. Let me get the chairs from the lawn back into the house. And Marissa's like, brain, I was throwing the chairs out. That was brain's like, yes, you love it. Exactly. Here's more of it. <laughs> so now substitute chairs mm. with thoughts and emotions and memories. The more you engage with it, the more you're trying to fix it, the more the brain gives you more of it. That's why if you keep spending time on your trauma and you keep reacting to these feelings with behaviors around it, you, the brain's like, oh, you love trauma. You mm -hmm. love fixing it. Let me give you more. That's why we want to make trauma an active. And I'm going to teach you that later on in this, I would say, podcast. Or is it like a, it's like a behind the scenes in coaching, Kinda, which is yeah. cool. This is what no one, like, let me know which coaches do bring their clients on and show you exactly, I would say it's called transparency. Yeah. It's very transparent. Yeah. So back to the value garden exercise. I tell her to bring like a good enough space paper so she can write the seven values on it. The seven values are physical fitness, relaxation. Okay. So the first subject is relaxation, creative expression, family and friends relationships, romantic relationships, fun, and business slash money. By the way, we didn't even say this. What is your work? I'm a film producer. She's a film producer. Yeah. Which is really cool. That's why I'm in LA right now on a shoot. Yes. And that's where we met because she came to LA for the shoot and then she was like, oh, I'm in LA. And yesterday we met and then we were like, oh, we could do tomorrow this. Yeah. So we're here now. So we did the value garden. Yeah. So she wrote the value garden mm -hmm. on the piece of paper. Her brain was probably part of the league. What, what are we doing here in therapy? I always talked about my past. Why are we doing the value thing? But what I also do in the calls, usually I explain to them why we're doing this. Because if not, she's like, no, there can be a lot of resistance of like, no, we have to talk about my problems. The most important thing is my problems. I actually explained, Marissa, why fixing problems is creating more problems, even on the first call. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even think of anything I liked at the time. Yeah. I was like, I thought we were just going to talk about everything that's wrong with me. And you're like, no, what do you like? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's why we use the paper and write it down because you get more clarity. And that's why we have the different categories because we have a want to have a balance of your life because a lot of people are like, oh, no, I just want to work, mm -hmm. just work. And then you don't have a balance, right? You're just burning yourself out with work or you neglecting relationships or you're only focusing on relationships. Yeah, I only want to hang out with my boyfriend. Yeah. Only all day. I never want to leave him alone. He's crying sometimes because he can't be by himself, but I never want to leave him alone. I'm scared I lose him. That would be a compulsion too. And then we were approached it. But the cool thing about the value garden exercise, guess what? It's also an amazing tool for me to find out about her life. Mm. Because I see exactly in the value garden exercise what she currently spends her time on and what she actually wants to spend her time more mm. on, but she avoids. And these two are keys. And I'll explain to you guys right now why. So we have the value garden exercise, right? We have... The, in the exercise, we are doing two things. We're adding to these categories actions that support the garden, right? We have the values, romantic relationships, creative expression, business slash money, physical fitness, etc. And then we're adding actions underneath that Marissa is already doing to grow her life. For example, in physical fitness, maybe she already goes to the gym. So she writes that down. But then the second category that's really important is we're writing also things down that Marissa wants to do, but she's avoiding mm. 
most likely because of compulsions. Okay, so Marissa, I want you to write now five actions under each thing that grows the garden. Now, it's not only going to be things that you already do. It's also going to be things that you want to do, but you maybe haven't done them because of anxiety. Maybe you want to make a account on TikTok where you share about your producer experiences. I or already maybe have you want to that. make a podcast. Say, say what? Sorry. I already oh. have that. Oh, you have it. Okay. I love it. <laughs> so then you write that also, but maybe some other things for creative expression, whatever you want to add. And I'll give you some time now to add those five actions to grow your garden. Okay. 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 So for example, maybe Marissa wants to go to a boxing class, but the brain says, no, there's uncertainty. We're not ready yet. Or maybe Marissa wants to do a podcast about being a producer, but the brain is like, no, we're not ready yet. We have to be perfect. We have to do a sign at first. We have to uh, get our, heal our trauma first. We have to do more self-help addiction first. So this is a great opportunity for her to write those things down because actually you are letting go of all these patterns by focusing on doing the things that you value because the more you avoid doing the things that you value, like the podcast, for example, you're showing your brain that this must be dangerous mm. because why would you keep avoiding it if it's not dangerous? So you keep avoiding it and the brain's like, oh, this must be dangerous. Okay, what are the three things that I have to protect you from the danger? Oh, I have emotions, I have thoughts, and I have bodily sensations. Okay, let me just give you some panic attacks. Let me just give you some anxiety and let me just give you some thoughts of not being good enough. And then you don't do the podcast. And this is why I have Marissa write down the podcast and write down all the other actions, maybe in relationships, business slash money, creative expression. Maybe she wants to be a painter, a dancer. Maybe she already does dancing, but she wants to do an Etsy store where she sells her painting. Whatever it is, right? I mean, so many examples. You have so many ideas for me. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many clients. Etsy store. So, yeah. But you write those things down because. This is your GPS. This is your clarity. This is your map. So my question to you was, when we did the exercise, did you know first time on the call how important this map would be for your life? I didn't realize it at the time, but I quickly realized it. <laughs> because after that call, I was like, I felt so different than how I did after talk therapy, you know? I didn't need a bubble bath, like my old therapist would say. And I was like, oh, I, I'm understanding what he's trying to tell me. And the cognitive diffusion, is that what it's called? Yes. That whole concept introduced to me was like life-changing because I didn't understand. I was like, me and my brain are the same. You know, I yes. am my brain. And after I learned about that, I was understanding. Like, I slowly started separating myself from the brain. And I would look at my value garden every single day. And no matter how I thought or what I was feeling, I was like, I'm going to go do these things no matter what. I just want to see if this is fucking crazy. And the reason why this is fucking crazy is she probably went to multiple therapists. Yeah. She went to multiple therapists for 15 years. And none of these therapists, this is something I teach in the first session because it's important to teach in the first session to differentiate from your brain. Cognitive diffusion, this is what she just approached, mm -hmm. is, I taught her that in the first session. It's a differentiation with you and your brain. And then second, I'm also going to teach you guys the tools how to start practicing cognitive diffusion. But it's fucking crazy that they haven't taught it that. Guess what? I don't have a certificate. I didn't go to university. They went seven years probably to university. It's around, I think it's like four to seven years. Then they have to be in the practice. In that time from doing all their fucking exams, studying with more advanced therapists, getting $150 books, $200 books, getting all these certificates and doing all these exams that the state says is necessary to transform your life. You trust them with your life to get advice. None of them have taught her cognitive diffusion you know how simple it is to explain that simple concept and she came to me after 15 years and in that call I explained to her and from then on it clicked it was like oh this is how my brain works I don't have to identify with the brain I don't have to do the I don't have to let my life be dictated by the thoughts and emotions that I thought was me I thought I was shy I thought I wasn't good enough I thought I was not ready yet I thought I have to 
not do things with wrong feelings. So in a second, we're going to approach cognitive diffusion. But another thing I want to address is the bubble bath situation. <laughs> the reason I want to address this is the bigger idea behind this. You shouldn't suffer in a fucking coaching call. And by the way, yeah, a coaching call can be challenging, by the way. You can have a lot of emotions coming out. I'm not saying that. But to purposefully go here and attack, so to say, Marissa and spend time on her past for no fucking reason, by the way. This is not productive because the brain is just like, oh, yeah, she loves engaging in her past. Let's give her more depressed memories in this. And then she goes out and they're like... I feel so depressed. I just remember reliving the same thing over and over and over again. And I was like, this sucks. Why am I crying every week for an hour? This sucks. The, the therapist basically beats her up emotionally and that's, that says, oh, I guess I'll beat you up emotionally. Go take a bubble bath. And then next week, come back and we can see some more beating. And then I, I didn't, nothing was happening. Nothing was changing. So one thing I wanted to mention is not all therapists are bad. Okay, I'm making some jokes here, but to me, it's very sad that a lot of people spend so many years and so much time, so much money going to therapists, especially even spending the time in those sessions and then spending time to making themselves worse by spending more time on the past situations. And there's not really a solution. There's not really tools given. But what I want to say is I'm not bashing all therapists. There are great therapists out there. Um, what I teach is based on ACT therapy. It's a behavioral therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy. Also exposure and response prevention therapy. Mm -hmm. Behavioral therapies is sad though. They only cite therapies. They're actually the ones that really should be taught. But then there's also a big difference I want to mention. Even if therapists studied ACT therapy and ERP therapy, that doesn't mean that they're actually going to be experts or really helpful at teaching it to you. The reason for that is, the important part is that they themselves, they themselves practice these tools. Because they have to be athletes in their practice to be good at practicing you. Now, let me tell you this. I used to have the strongest OCD for 11 years. Crazy. And I used to go to, even here in LA, they had like a specialist OCD practice. And they almost, like, they didn't help me, really. They didn't really help me. Uh, I went to so many others. It didn't really help me. And they had certificates. They are, like, sanctioned from the state. Whatever the fuck. They have these nice things on the wall, right? That don't even matter at all. I went to Mark Freeman. Mark Freeman recovered 12 years ago from OCD. He doesn't have one certificate. Uh, I, th I think he has business certificate, <laughs> actually. He may, I think he went to school for business. But he doesn't have a certificate in psychology or therapy. He is... In my eyes, and I know a lot of people on the internet, the best mental health expert, OCD expert on the internet. I agree. He doesn't have any uh, certificate, but he practiced for years and years and years and years and changed his brain. So then he knows exactly how it works. I worked for years and years and years and years on my brain, changed with tools, and now I know exactly how things work. And work. Imagine this. Would you go to a personal trainer in physical fitness who only knows every single book and went to school for physical fitness, but they actually never squatted or did bench press or built muscle? They just only know things about physical fitness? Would you trust them? But they like overweight, has diabetes or something? Would you trust a tennis coach who knows all the knowledge about tennis, but they never played tennis? How are they going to teach you the skill? Or swimming. Think about swimming. They know all the things about swimming, but they never swam. They never built the skill of swimming. How are they going to help you? There are great therapists out there. There are great therapists. And later on, I teach you how to know that you have a great therapist. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to teach you that actually in the second part of this video. Let's go to cognitive diffusion. Basically, cognitive diffusion is very simple to be explained. It's the differentiation between you and your brain. You are not your brain. You're not your brain, which means you are not the thoughts. You're not the emotions. A lot of people identify with their thoughts. They think, I'm not good enough. I'm not ready yet. 
I'm just not confident. I'm shy. I'm a person who has ADHD. I'm BPD. I'm this. And then they identify with this and a lot of times also get love for it, for their trauma or their identities, even racial or religious, whatever it is. I am black. I'm white. I am, what, what are some other identities you can name? Bipolar. I'm bipolar. Yeah. I'm dumb, I'm, I'm anxious, this, I'm yeah. that. I'm not good enough. Yeah, I'm not good enough. I'm anxious. I'm just an anxious person. Yeah. Identifying with that is identifying with the story. And then you're reacting to that. You're doing your behaviors around it. So identifying with these patterns and then doing your behaviors around the patterns is telling the brain, oh, these patterns are still important. Let me give you more of those patterns. So tools that I gave Marissa on the first call for cognitive diffusion, we immediately on the call changed our language. We changed our language to, instead of my thoughts and my emotions, we made it the thoughts and the emotions. And this is so helpful, or the brain. How was it for you on the first call when I explained to you, when 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 I insisted you would use the thoughts and the emotions when you told me what you were going through i just kept catching myself saying my 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 and it was hard to separate at first and then i slowly i think after the call i let it sit for a second and i slowly started being like oh i don't have to react to that thought oh i don't have to and then it was like the thought yeah not mine you know yeah and it, it kind of just turned like automatic after that exactly and the yeah. cognitive diffusion and the value garden exercise actually work hand in hand because yeah we can just say oh the thoughts say this i don't have to do this but we want to also give a gps because what are we going to do now if we if we're not reactive to our feelings anymore if you're not trying to like get rid of the heartbreak anymore if you're not trying to get rid of the jealousy anymore where's our gps what we're we supposed to do because usually you're being reactive mm-hmm. right we are changing actually and this is something important that your therapist or coach should tell you, we are changing from the reactive, the emotional addictive engine to the proactive valued action engine, which you actually take your power back, right? You're taking your power back where you are starting to decide how to live your life and you are actually teaching your brain with your focus then on the valued actions what you care about and over time the brain makes these patterns that you're not reacting to anymore inactive and this is a practice so this is why why on the first call that i did with you mm-hmm. i always it's a long i don't know if you remember but it was the longest call that we it had was like an hour and a half yeah. yeah it was like yeah it was almost i think it was around two hours Maybe, actually yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, because it's a, because what i do and here i go a little bit inside so I'm not going to, when she comes on the call, I'm not going to be like, hey, Marissa, I don't care about what you're going through. We're just going to do this, this, and this. No, of course not, right? What I do is I let her express herself. Mm-hmm. So I did let her express herself first. Marissa, tell me everything you want to tell me. Oh, my gosh. And this also gives me a chance what she's going through, right? To see, of course, I need to be aware, okay? This is not to say. So I didn't want you guys to get a wrong idea that I'm just like, no, we're just doing this, we're doing that. I want to know what are compulsions, right? And if you don't know what compulsions are, compulsions are anything you do to control feelings, to avoid feelings, to control thoughts, to avoid thoughts, to control situations, those kind of things. So I really want to know One of my questions is, why did you come to coaching? What is it? What are your goals? What are the things you want to change, right? And then I see by her answers, okay, is she still trying to control feelings, which most people do, right? Most important thing, what your coach and therapist actually should help you with is help you live your life, doing the things that you want to do, helping you achieve those things. Because along the way, you learn more how to be confident and you dropping patterns, So this was something so new to Marissa because everything that was before was how do we fix your anxiety? How do we fix your feelings? How do we fix that? How do you fix your thoughts? Does it make sense? Yep. So Marissa done the value garden exercise. All my clients do the value garden exercise. She writes down her actions and then I ask her two questions. Do you remember the questions? No. I'm going to ask her the questions now. So, So the first question is what is the water of the garden how do we grow our life garden how do we grow our garden yeah the actions the actions exactly (laughs) so because the actions are what's growing your life right it's growing the support system that we have now then the second question is that probably a lot of you guys have right now 
Marissa, do you think your garden cares about your emotions and thoughts? No. It doesn't give a shit. Why, why don't you think your garden cares about your emotions and thoughts? Because if you don't water it, then it's not going to grow. So imagine I'm going to be Marissa's or I'm going to be even your garden right now, right? I'm okay, Marissa and everybody, hi out there. I'm your garden. Hey, it's me, garden. <laughs> hey, it's me, garden. Okay, guys. Uh, so I'm your garden. Um, I don't really have... I don't know what emotions and thoughts, the anxiety that you have, right? I don't know what it is. It's, it's fun. It's a human thing. It's cool that you have it. It's totally exciting. I don't know what it is. I wish I would know how it is, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm your garden, right? Um, and uh, I care about other things. They're really important to me. So uh, your anxiety, it's, it's cool that you have your anxiety to do the podcast. Um, but can you just go over See the garden of creative expression right here? Can you just shoot the podcast with the anxiety, Marissa and everyone? Can you just go over and do the and then go to the gym with the feeling of not feeling uh, ready yet or not feeling like you feel like going to the gym? Can you have that feeling of not feeling like it? And can you just go over and water the garden? It's drying out. Do you see it's drying out? You're killing the support system. Gee, you can have the anxiety and the thoughts of not being good enough and you can walk over and do it. Can you add special effects where you're like growing branches and stuff out of your, your head? Maybe. Though. <laughs> I would have to pay my editor for it. It probably takes a long we time. We have the budget for but, that one. <laughs> we do have the budget, but uh, there's some things more important. So Marissa, just to establish for the audience, what were the problems that you came to me for? I was obsessively thinking. I was in an on-again, off-again relationship. Um, I forgot. What yeah. were you obsessively thinking about? I was obsessively thinking about my relationships, about how to fix different thoughts that I was having, fix different feelings that I was having. The ones that I remember was you always felt guilty. Oh, I always felt guilty, yeah. And you thought you were the wrong girlfriend. Yeah. Do you want to know something? Yes. My ex said that I was manipulative. Yeah. And what do you mean by validating other people's experiences? Like, because my ex said that I didn't validate how he was feeling. Okay, great. For, for right now, just, just fuck what your ex said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I felt like that in all my relationships. Not even my romantic relationships, but even my friendships and my family relationships. I always felt like I was doing something wrong. Exactly. And sh like you changed so much. Now I don't from... give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. But that's great for the audience to see like how it changed because yeah. it was such a big thing. Even in the first call. More important it is that we get you in a stable position. And what I mean with stable position is that we make it about what you value we don't make it about what other people say other people can tell me whatever the fuck they want to tell me yeah it doesn't matter to me um yeah it can hurt me it can hurt me i can have the feeling of hurt right mm. and thoughts can come in of oh yeah what if i'm manipulating right that's a thought that comes in but if i don't talk back to that thought and if i don't react to that hurt and if i keep going on what i value the more i show my brain that i care about what i value and the mm. more my brain we'll see that we value ourselves and we became, become more stable on that um, uh, engine of actions. But the more you're chasing emotions, can you see how emotions can pull you in any direction? Mm -hmm. And actually, the more you chase them, the more emotionally weak you get because avoiding emotions and chasing emotions is like avoiding weights. Mm -hmm you get weaker and it seems and the you get pulled more and more so and this is what i want to let you guys know this is how because it's different for everybody some people react more to guilt some people react more for, to anger some people react more to depression to hurt whatever emotions and it can be a variety of it right but i found out quickly through asking important questions okay marissa is very reactive to guilt mm. and is doing behaviors to get rid of the guilt to please the people around her so they're not mad at her or not leave her or not abandon her. And the more she does the behavior around the guilt and is not being okay, being be okay with the uncomfortable emotion and move forward towards the value actions, the more she's circling around the guilt, the more her brain is like, oh, Marissa, you love these chairs of guilt. You want to throw some more of them? I also want to add that the relationships, the friendships, 
my family relationships have flourished so much in the last two years. Like, the people that I had in my life at that point versus who I have in my life at this point is completely different. I mean, not completely. I still have my family and, like, same friends and whatever, but I would never accept the type of behavior that I put up with back then, two years ago. The problem that I also want to mention is why she even was doing the behavior back in the day because the more you spend time obsessively in your head if you're the wrong person if you're the narcissist if you're the problem in the relationship the more the brain's going to warp your reality because it's just going to attack you with more and more thoughts and because you identify with these thoughts and that's why cognitive diffusion is so important to separate yourself from them because you identify with your thoughts you react to every single thought Mm -hmm. so you basically react to every single pattern so this is what I tried helping Marissa break and we accomplished it. Now I just show up in my relationships as fully myself and lead with what I value. And if people like me, cool. And if not, then I'm like. Remember on the last coaching call, the little Wayne line I gave you? Yeah. Yes. I want someone that I'm like in awe of. Maybe I'm a narcissist. You want someone that you are in awe of. Yeah, because I think that I'm really cool. <laughs> so I want someone that's really cool. Yeah, that's right. But you can have someone that's really cool. Like you. Every really time cool. I meet someone that's really cool, they don't like me back. No, but then they cannot be really cool. <laughs> no, really, because you are cool. You're really, really cool, right? If someone doesn't think you're really, really cool. They cannot be really, really cool. But then automatically, if they don't like me back, then I'm like, oh, I must not be really cool because this person. No, no, no. That's where you need to take your side. This is actually a. A quote of Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne said it uh, when he brought, I think, Carter Three out in an interview. I do what I think is cool. And if you don't think it's cool, then I think you're not cool. So you approach it with that attitude. And I don't think you're like, I'm a little straight. I think I'm really cool. I think my music is really cool. And if someone thinks it's not cool, well, I'm not cool. I don't think they are cool. I need to follow that. Make it cool to be yourself. And then whoever doesn't like you for you being yourself is not cool. That's what I really think. I think that's my biggest thing that I need to work on is not liking people that don't like me. If you have any questions, you can message me on my Instagram. You know I will. (laughs) (laughs) That tool helps a lot of people. For example, who always trying to chase people who don't like them. Yeah. And Always searching for validation. Yeah, exactly. Places. You're chasing validation. You're basically chasing the value that you don't see in yourself in other people. That's why the value garden is so important because actively engaging and putting effort into the value garden is showing your brain that you value yourself. So it will also help addictive relationship. Guys, so many people come to me. You, you think people come to me uh, mostly for mental health? It's probably 50% mental health. And 50% relationships. Mm. People come to me for relationships, but they don't understand that the foundation of the relationship is the mental health. I never tried to be a relationship coach, by the way. I literally changed, uh, I I literally shared the mental health tools with examples Mm. of relationships and they blew up on the internet and people were like, oh, you're a relationship coach. That's why I came to you because I just went through a breakup. Exactly. A lot of people come uh, to me for the breakups. Uh, and it's deeper than that because the compulsions is the chasing validation. Yeah. So, okay, what are some other things that you, uh, that's already, I guess, enough. That's a lot of things already. <laughs> but are there some other things that you can think of that you had problems with? Not feeling good enough, um, being a perfectionist. I kept being like, I can't do this thing until I'm perfect at it. Yeah, that's also something really important. Yeah. That's also important to help with cognitive diffusion because a lot of people are like, I cannot do this thing with sort of wrong feelings because mm-hmm. they identify with the feelings. And you actually, and then self up addiction comes in yeah. because it's like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I must not be ready yet. I have to read this other book. I have to do this other technique. I have to do this other spiritual thing. And I have to heal my trauma or I have to do this ayahuasca or, or whatever it is to heal my trauma. And then I can start my podcast, which is backwards. And you're teaching your brain that you, are you mocking me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're teaching your brain. That I'm expressive here. I'm expressive. I love it. I'm passionate. I want to. I want to do it too. Yeah, do it too. I'm adding to the energy. We are like monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where was I? Don't listen to your brain. 
I forgot, sorry. <laughs> the more you're doing the self-up addiction and the more you're avoiding doing the things that you value, the more the brain's like, that must be dangerous. Like doing the podcast, doing your business, going in that relationship, it must be dangerous because you're avoiding it. Okay, I have an idea. Let me give you more thoughts of not being ready yet, more thoughts of not being good enough. And you think then, I'm not good enough, I'm not ready yet, but the brain really has an entire data bank from the past that knows you react to, oh, Marissa reacts to guilt, cool, let's give her guilt. Oh, Marissa reacts to not being good enough, okay, let's give her the thought of not being good enough. And then she avoids doing a podcast or building a business because, because she showed us that's dangerous. With her behavior, she showed us that's dangerous because she's avoiding it. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah, we should talk about behaviors that we do to avoid those things. Say it again. We should talk about behaviors that we do to avoid those things. Yeah, what are what were the behaviors that you did to avoid doing actually the actions that you value and live your life? Doomlessly scroll all day long. I was on TikTok 24-7. <laughs> That's how I found this guy. Um, so there was a good in it. <laughs> yeah, there was some good in it. And I learned some I learned how to cook, you know, there was some good in it. But I You was told like, me researching, you researched a lot. Yeah, I would be on Reddit threads, like looking up has anyone else felt like this before? Why don't I feel good enough? Why don't I feel real? Like the dissociative. OCD? Oh, depersonalization, yeah. derealization. Yeah. It happens so much. A lot of people come to me for that. Where it's, because the more you ask yourself, is this all real? Why does it even matter? And you go even, um, what are the, the conspiracy theories? Like if this is a simulation? Yeah, if this is a simulation. Yeah. Um, um, if this is a simulation. We're in a different dimension. Yeah, all of those things. The more you spend your time on, the more the brain is whopping your reality because it just gives you more and more questions, more doubts. And then you're just trying to get rid of it and trying to get clarity. You're trying to clean the plate. And then the brain is like, oh, you love cleaning plates? Let me give you more dirt because you love cleaning plates. And then Marissa's like, oh, yeah, let me more research so I get more clarity. And it's this addictive game, yeah. right, that comes. And it's an overstimulation. But mm-hmm. the solution was not to try to fix those thoughts just let them be there and go do what you value anyway go refer back to your value garden and and what's the important part because if we don't do it mindfully right because even if you do those actions but you still spend time in your head on oh am i real is this real you're then still, you're still feeding you're still the pattern. Doing mental compulsion yes when you're doing that that's why one of the in the beginning also i teach people the no brain method it's no brain, we're walking right now. No brain, we're doing this, uh, we're cooking right now. No brain, because you want to practice mindfulness. Because you want to show your brain inside and outside of your head, outside of your head with your behavior, and inside of your head with mindfulness, you want to show your brain what you care about. And this is a practice. Did this all happen from the, like, yeah, you got the information. Did this all happen magically no, from the first day? I had day? to practice so much saying, exactly. no brain, I'm doing this. No brain, I'm doing this. So what are the coaches and the therapists and a lot of the speakers sell you on? It's like, oh instant, yeah, instant, 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 instant. But that's always like a lie. The same as it would be a lie. What if I would tell you, oh, you become the best swimmer in one session? You would be like, like I okay, know. Okay, Michael Phelps, let's go. But Teach you would me. be like, I know it's bullshit. Would you not know it's bullshit? I don't know. Some people sell themselves really good. And then you're like, in the first session, you go into, you never swam before. You're going to be an uh, athlete swimmer. So you would believe that. Cut that out. No, no, we keep that in <laughs> because I'm sure not a lot of people out there would believe it. Like, okay, you, first session I teach you how to be in the NBA. You're going to be in the NBA, yeah. WNBA. Have you seen how tall I am? Yeah. Huh? Have you seen how tall I am? Yeah. Okay, we want to add that Marissa's delusional. <laughs> I regret everything. You should have never invited her on this. No, I'm just Wait, joking. Let me give you an example. I want to at no, least know, like, give one example. No, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it. I'm what, just being silly. Okay. At least, the, okay, one think of, values, of one example one of my values is that one tell you, one, okay, gain 40 pounds of muscle in one day. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People out there are going to be like, you're destroying your dreams, maybe she could do it in one day. <laughs> no, it's a process, guys. And this is really important to understand. <laughs> this is how you can tell... Marissa is just authentic and this is not something where like, oh yeah, Marissa, I tell you what to say and this and that. She's just destroying my examples, okay? But I know you guys know that in a One day... One of my values is chaos and I love yes. creating it. <laughs> I'm your tennis coach, okay? And you have a tennis session with me, but the first session is only like, I'm teaching you how to understand tennis, right? I'm teaching you. Yeah. And 
to teach you really well because I'm a tennis pro. And I tell you, Marissa, next week we're going to meet. And, but you got you to gotta practice uh, every day playing tennis. And then you come back next week. And what happens if you didn't practice? I'm going to suck at tennis. And what happens if your goal is to be at the U.S. Open in like three years, but you never practice? You only read about books about tennis. I'm not going to be good at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do, can you see why most people with therapy have no success? Yeah. Can you see how most, why most people who know more about fat loss than any other people but never practice stay fat? Mm -hmm. Can you see how people who watch every single self-help video and have so much knowledge about self-help but never apply and like complain why they always get the same relationships or they always still have ADHD? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I love you're very aware and I love that you understand all of these things. Um, first thing I want to tell you is the helpful tool of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> no, but this is what people sell you on. They're like in one day, but you know that if you want to play in the NBA, if you want to build 20 pounds of muscle, if you want to build 40 pounds of muscle, I actually built 40 pounds of muscle in a year, but it took me a year. It took me eight. It took me. Yeah. It took me a year. Shameless plug. I'm huge now. I'm, I'm, I was skinny. Yes. I was skinnier. <laughs> Um, but it's a process and you don't want to believe people that sell you online. There's so many there. Even the people that tell you, I teach you the secure attachment. You avoid an attachment. You are anxious attachment. Why do you have to label everything? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> <laughs> they give you the label. So you're like, oh yeah, that's my problem. Also, and then the coach can be like, oh yes, I give you this thing and now we yeah. fix it and you can stay on my sessions and you give me money and you think I'm so smart because I have all these psychological labels. It's so stupid. And then you fix that thing and then a whole new problem will enter into your brain. Like, oh, okay, now I'm secure attachment, but now I might be like, OCD or anxiety yeah. or bipolar or depersonalization whatever. derealization yeah. it can be anything but also what means secure attachment because even I talked about this Mark Freeman actually taught me this recently some people when they think the secure attachment is like oh yeah I always give you reassurance baby I always give you reassurance I give you reassurance like yeah that's not secure attachment that's doing compulsions and you're going to get more insecurity so that's also, a great I feel like humans are so complex and different circumstances and different times in our lives bring so many different emotions and thoughts and feelings and whatever and I feel like we all experience different attachment styles at different times you know it's like you're not just like permanently an anxious attachment person or permanently this like we're not permanently anything we're just constantly evolving and changing exactly and yeah why do you have to label everything exactly and the more you label it because people love to label things because it gives them control and safety yeah People who come from trauma. Shit. I used to eat that shit up. Yeah. People who come from trauma look for control and safety. And these coaches and gurus saying, yeah, you are secure attached and you are this astrology sign. <laughs> you are this certain thing. You like, you certain, your ADHD, you hold on to it because at least you're like, oh, now I maybe can solve it. Yeah. But then you make an identity and you're like, oh, that's just me. That's just me. I'm just this person. Because you get also love then for your victim mindset sometimes. Mine was like the fixer brain. I would always be like, Oh, I know what I am. Now I can now I have a way to fix it. Exactly. And then I would fix something and then a whole new thing would come up. Like, oh, this is a new thing to fix. And I was like, when am I gonna be done fixing? Am I Bob the Builder? What the fuck? The brain is like, no, what do you mean, Marissa? You love fixing. <laughs> what do you mean? And we just fix all the time. But then when you started to just focus on the and you stop the fixing. And I was like, no brain, let's just go work out and let's not think about what to fix right now. Then I was like, oh, I lost 50 pounds and I'm so healthy now and I go on walks every yeah, day. Yeah, tell about saying, your physical fitness, by the way. Tell about what happened with, with your physical fitness. Um, with, I, Yeah, go ahead. I lost 50 pounds, 40 pounds, something like that. I lost a lot of weight in a healthy way. I started eating better, cooking every day, eating healthy meals. I started walking like four to five miles a day. And do I you think that has something to do with the emotional fitness and focusing on the valued actions even when there's wrong feelings? Yeah, because I used to have bad feelings and be like, oh, I don't feel like walking right now. I'm too sad to walk or I feel too guilty to walk or I feel too whatever to go to the gym. Like, I'm going to get judged at the gym, even simple things like that. But I would always wait for the right feeling to go do those things. 
And then after the coaching calls with Star, I was like, fuck this. I'm going on a walk. Like, I don't care how guilty I feel. And then I would get home, and then I would not feel guilty anymore. <laughs> it was like magic. So fast forward through the practice, through everything, from the problems that we talked about, how did your life change now Everything's after a different. year and a half? Everything's different. I mean, when I first came to you, that was two years ago. It was June of 2022. That's crazy. It's yeah. June now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's been two years. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything's different in my life. I mean, I'm healthier than I've ever been physically, mentally, emotionally. I have wonderful relationships in my life. I feel happy, you know? I mean, sometimes I feel sad, and then I'm just like, fuck it, I feel sad. And that's fine, too. <laughs> like, exactly. We're always gonna, it's not like it's like a fix for... You're never going to feel anxiety anymore. You're no. never going to feel anxious anymore. It's not a fix. It's like learning to be okay with it no matter how you feel or what you think. Like, I'm just chilling, you yeah. know? <laughs> and the important thing in society, one of the biggest things that society brainwashes you is, oh, this feeling must be wrong. I need to fix it. Mm. When you have like a certain feeling, and this is the problem. The more you try and make feelings wrong, the more you make anxiety wrong, then you get excessive anxiety. But we humans, it's exactly what Mark Freeman talks about. You are not a rock. A rock is always better than you in not having feelings. But we are humans. We're supposed to have feelings. And how and, lucky are we to have all those feelings? Exactly. Like to experience all those, like the wide range of feelings. And by you actually letting them be, not interfering, let, being a space for them and actually moving forward. Even Marissa said she went to walks with wrong feelings. That's how she built more emotional fitness. And over time, these things got easier and easier for her. The problem in society is the fixing. Mm. It's the, oh, you have anxiety? Okay, we need you to get there to get fixed. We need you to get a technique to get fixed. You need to look something on Reddit to get fixed. Guess what? This is actually the problem. Think of it like this. Why... When we eat a strawberry, we don't, would you go into the stomach and would you be like, hey, stomach, today I'm going to tell you where the strawberry goes. <laughs> I'm going to tell you where, I'm, I'm going to take charge over the digestion today. Your stomach would be like, what the fuck? I've been your stomach for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I have a relationship with the bloodstream. I have a relationship with the liver. I have a relationship with the brain. I'm really tight with everyone. Like, you don't even know where this cell goes or where this nutri nutrient goes. And you're like, no, no, I just go in there and I do You would hurt yourself. So why do we leave this alone, but we go into the brain and try to fix the emotions and thoughts? Mm -hmm. Stop fixing them. That's the compulsion. And this is known from ACT therapy and ERP therapy. And your therapist and coach should tell you that. I also will say that I noticed talk therapy. I don't want to hate on talk, talk therapy I think that it could work for other people, and I think that there's good therapists out there. But I noticed for me, I was turning my talk therapy into a compulsion. Like, exactly. I was only going to make my feelings feel better. Yes. And then I would feel better for, it would be like a quick relief, and then I'd be right back to where I was at before. So talk therapy can be a good, like, can be an intro level. Because if the therapist is a good therapist, they will ask you questions, which makes you reflect And which makes you question your own belief systems, mm -hmm. which makes you question if your thoughts, which makes you question your patterns. That can be good, but it's so inefficient. And don't get me wrong. I sometimes ask Marissa about the past or I mm -hmm. asked my clients about the past because we can sometimes take a step to the side and look, oh, where did you actually got this from? Mm -hmm. And that's fine because then we notice, oh, This is not something that is us. It's something that we adapted and it comes from here. And it's logical that we feel abandonment issues right now or something, right? But once you understand where it co comes from, then it's like, okay, what are you going to do about it Exactly. Now? Stop like continuously talk about yeah. it and find other problems in it. I got to it's a point in talk therapy where I was like, I already told you the story. Billion <laughs> like, times. I already, went, I already went through this. Yes. And I was like, what do I... I remember asking my therapist, like every therapist that I've had, and the question that I would ask when I realized that I was done with that therapist specifically, I was like, how do I fix this? Like, how am I, like, how do I, what do I do about this now that I know where it comes from, you know? And they would always be like, oh, well, let's talk next week, you know? And I was just like. This is incredible, but did I give you tools and exercises every week to do? On the first call, yeah. Ever yeah. since the first call. Yeah. Yeah. How many coaching sessions did you have with me overall? 
I think 20. And, but we didn't do 20. So usually they are weekly. Yeah. Are weekly. The I first we, session is a long one because yeah. we talked about the value, her problems. She needs to express herself. I need to ask questions that are important to find out about her. Yeah. The value garden exercise and the cognitive diffusion and then give her a practice for the week and then I'll see her a week after. It's week after week and it's important definitely in the beginning yeah. to have weekly calls because the brain can always pull you back in and mm-hmm. be like, no, this, this. And then I gave you the whiteboard. Yeah, I saw my whiteboard. Well, I, I didn't it. give it to her, but I told her to buy it. Yeah, and I why did I tell you to get the whiteboard and what do you think did the whiteboard help you with? Um, I still have my whiteboard. It says on the top, what do I want to grow right now? Am I allowed to, is that insider info? No, no. Yeah, you can say that, all okay. of them. Um, I have on the top, what do I want to grow right now? And then I have all the things bullet pointed that I want to grow actively. And it's going for walks, cooking meals. Every It's all of my valley garden things, my actions that I wanted to grow. And then I can see it every single day as a reminder. Of, it's a reminder. Yeah. Because the brain can always say, oh, this. And then you look at the value. Oh, this is important. Yeah, growing. Yeah. Not reactive fixing. Growing. And this is what supports you. And I'm so in my head. I'm such a thinker that if I don't have something physically that I'm looking at, I will just like be like, my brain's going a million miles per minute. And then I just forget yeah. about the practice completely. So I think we did eight sessions back to back, which yeah. is two months, so weekly, right? Yeah. And then... Maybe there was like a two weeks or four weeks in between. We weaning off because, yeah. Because she was good. I was like, like she was doing like good. I'm then happy. sometimes she came back with something where I called her out because yeah. she was using the sessions as a compulsion, so to say. Yeah. I think you tried just to sometimes vent, I called you out. Yeah. Get validation, I called you out. Yeah. And I was, what did I always say? Go back, Go back to, to the, the practice. Go I back like, to the practice. So I will also, so this is, there's, there are people, there are coaches who will want to you to keep the problems because they didn't keep you as a client. Because they make so much money. Because they make money of it, right? But these are the co- coaches that are in scarcity mindset. I believe that if I give Marissa the most value, if I give her the best, if she can trust me. Also, by the way, this is something I always have. When I look in the mirror, I want to be proud of myself. So for that reason, I couldn't do something like that. Integrity. Yeah. I w- when I look in the mirror, me being proud of myself is more important than, than me being good with my soul. Me being, good ju- me being just good with my soul is the most important thing because that's why I can do great videos. That's kind of, I, Tupac said this. He said he's so good at being an actor and doing these things because he looks in the mirror and he can still see his soul. He didn't sell it. I know how to go to that true spot in myself because I'm there every day. I can be me. I can be whoever because I'm true to me. I can go to neutral easily. A lot of people, black, white, Mexican, young or old, fat or skinny, have a problem being true to themselves. They have a problem looking in the mirror and looking directly into their own souls. The reason I sell six million records, the reason I could go to jail and come out without a scratch, the reason I can walk around, the reason I am who I am today is because I can look directly into my face and find my soul. It's there. It's not sold. I didn't sell it. It's still within me. I still feel it. My heart is still connected to my body. So this gives me success. And me being congruent, me having morals gives me success. I know that. So, but also in addition, me being honest with Marissa, Marissa now tells everybody about me. I do. Literally everyone in my life knows you. <laughs> like, I've never met them, like my but life she coach tells star. My everybody life coach about star. me. My life coach star. <laughs> exactly. So, I, I, never, I never actually label myself as a life coach, but I overall, I that's I how you, that, like, yeah. say it, yeah. I was like, well, I feel like you help Mental me health, my relationship, life. life coach, yeah. Yeah. Uh, coach, it doesn't matter. Everybody's different. Some people need way longer than Marissa. Some people need... Six months, eight months continuously coming maybe. Some people need two months, three months, four months. It's how problematic was it and how well are you doing the practice and how much resistance do you have from mm-hmm. things. It's a lot of the practice, I think. Say it again? I think it's a lot of the practice. It's, all, it's mostly the practice. Yeah. You need to know the tools, yeah. but the most important thing is the practice in between the weeks. If and if I you don't understand this, then yeah. you fuck up therapy, you fuck up coaching. If I wasn't doing my practice in between our sessions, then I would notice that I was like, yeah. oh shit. Nothing would I'm really going change. Back to my old ways. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you came to me, you paid money, you met me, we did coaching for overall 
a year or a year and a half. Yeah. What changed? Everything in my life. I just feel like my brain is rewired in a whole different way. Like it's so automatic that it's hard to even answer that question because it's because this such is how the change. brain. Yes. Yeah. So this is what I always and this happened to me too, by the way. This is going to happen to you if you really do this practice. If you do this practice, you're not going to remember how you were. It's hard for you to remember how you were before because your brain is literally so rewired. Yeah. It will forget the compulsion. I had to remind her today of the compulsions she had. Mm-hmm. It will forget the compulsions that you had because the language of the brain the, the, is behavior. And when you change your behavior, your brain will forget. And these things that seem so important now to you in your life, when you do this practice... It's not only that they're not important anymore. You forget about them. Is that true? You know that like pit in your stomach when you're feeling those things, those bad emotions and those bad thoughts. When he reminded me of my compulsions that I was doing to get rid of that feeling, like you, you kind of remember that feeling, but it's so faint. Like I I can't even imagine feeling like that ever again. And you're a different person. You like confident, you're going out there, you're doing things. Yeah. Um, Also, you said relationships. What changed for you with relationships? family friends or romantic yeah all of them I mean I feel like I was in such with romantic relationships I was in such like an emotionally addictive cycle with men and what I was pursuing and what I was chasing and what I wouldn't let go of and now I'm in a place where I'm like I know what I want what I value and I want to share my values with somebody else that also is aware of their own values and then come together and create a valuable life I love that yeah Uh, second part what do you think before I answer the question? Now that you had therapists before where the practice, so to say, didn't work, mm. and me where the practice worked, how do you think? Could you now recognize a good coach or therapist better if there I was think like so. someone new? Yeah. How would you recognize them? With tools that they give you to practice and the context of what you're talking about, like they can. You can talk about the past all the time, but on the basis of what? Like, what are you doing? What are you... Why are you talking about that? You know? Like, why do you keep bringing it up? And it's like, okay, I understand where it comes from. Yes. Okay, now, here's tools to help you going forward. If there's no tools, then it's like, you're just talking. And did I explain to you... Did I also give you explanations about why we... Why it doesn't make sense to talk about the past? Yeah. And, like, the venting. Oh, one of my compulsions was venting. I would always text my sister or star and I would be like, this is how I'm feeling, blah, 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 just to make myself feel better. And I would always tell myself like, oh, I just need to talk about it and then I'll feel better. But what I was doing was just staying in the cycle of talking about it and like sticking those emotions, telling my brain that let's, th- let's think about this thing more. And then it would just be obsessive. Thinking. And did I call you out? Yes. Always. <laughs> you don't like it. I was like, <laughs> but it's good to see it I know yeah I know but venting also like all those things it just creates more venting then. I know yeah it's an it's also just, an addictive people would be like like my my mom and my sisters would just like text and be like Marissa's is venting again <laughs> just like <laughs> what the hell but it's good that you saw it yeah so yeah so what I want to see say how to recognize a, or how are you going to find a good coach or therapist first of what Marissa did is actually great it's a great hack Go actually on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Find the people who've done the things you want to do. Check them out on video. It's way more personal. You can kind of get an energy even Mm -hmm. even if you don't get it like fully. There's some scammers out there that trick really well. But you get kind of like an understanding. Would I feel comfortable even working with them? Or is there something about them that I resonate? Is there something from the teaching I resonate? Etc. So even because video, right? Yes, you can scam. You can trick. But it's really hard if you really look into it, people's mimics in their faces, Mm -hmm. people's um, expressions, people's congruency with their teachings. I see even there, people give away sometimes things on their stories or other things where you're like, oh, wait a second. Uh, He just shared this, I feel like, because he was venting or chasing validation, you know? Not that anybody, I'm not perfect. Not that anybody's perfect, okay? Sometimes maybe I vent it, but it's the degree to mm. what people are doing. So that's the first thing. You look, and I would say, don't look so much at certificates. Don't look so much at what they got from a university. If they have it, great, okay? It doesn't matter. Like Elon Musk, he, he doesn't care 
if his engineers that built his rocket ships ever went to high, if they do a fucking amazing job, right? There's no need even to have a college degree oh, well, okay. at all, uh, or even exactly. high school. You know, if you look at, um, say, people like uh, Bill Gates or Larry Ellison, Steve Jobs, these guys didn't graduate from college. Oh, out, yeah. But if yeah, you had a chance yeah. to hire them, of course, that would be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> look, if you can see if they've done the things. Even what we're doing right now, I'm actually showing you a client done here. Marissa, she exists <laughs> in reality, right? She made those changes. Like, look for those examples. Look for, I also post life coaching for that. On my, yeah. you might have even found me, or, mm -hmm. or you might have more trust. You might have more trust. I don't know. Have you seen other? Yeah, because I saw like your sessions with other yeah. people. So yeah. So I make like sessions on my like snap snaps of sessions. So there you would see. Oh, this is what he teaches. This is what mm -hmm. she teaches. So that's the first thing. Then, really, really important. Are they constantly just talking about the past? Mm. Are they constantly just asking you questions to like elongate the question? Are they giving you tools? Medi did I give you a meditation practice? Yes. Meditation is so important. Really, really important. From the first session, I gave you that meditation yeah. practice. From the first session, all the weeks, meditation practice, because meditation is the same practice. It's a reflection. You sit down. All the emotions and thoughts are going to come up. You're not reacting to them, and you bring your focus back to the breath. In the practice outside, all the emotions and thoughts come out and you bring the practice to the valued actions. Mm -hmm. It's a reflection and that's why sitting in meditation is so great because you're building emotional fitness there, you're building emotional fitness outside and it feeds each other. Yeah. So this is so great. Uh, meditation, they, they should give you a meditation practice. I'll also say that you are the client or you are the patient. So if you're finding a coach or a therapist that it doesn't seem like they're giving you anything and it's more about what they're getting from it. Obviously, that's a telltale sign that that's not a good therapist or coach. What do you mean you. what they're getting from it? Like money, yeah. per se, or time. Like, yeah. They're just getting more sessions with you. They're just getting more, like, they're receiving more from it than you are. Yeah, or, best example with Marissa, she asked for tools and they're like, oh, yeah, let's wait next week, take a bubble bath, right? I mean, that's stupid as fuck. You can't tell me it's not. So, <laughs> tools... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so they're supposed to give you tools. And then, but you as a client, you also have to take accountability. You have to do the tools. You have to do practice. Yeah. You don't have to be perfect. I always tell you, Marissa, you don't have to be perfect, but you have to take up more territory. Yeah. And we go step by step, right? Yeah. Like step by step with weights, 20 pounds, the next week, 30 pounds, yeah. higher and higher. And also, I would always, other advice that therapists would give me is like, read this book or read the self-help book or whatever. And I was like, I read every self-help book, <laughs> like... How, how much more until I feel better or exactly. until, like, my life changes or until, like, things are different in my life, you know, until I'm seeing yeah. changes. And I was like, nothing's ever going to happen. Nothing's ever changing. I just have to keep reading, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's another self-help addiction compulsion yeah, then. Yeah, So you want to... But they were telling me to do that. It's not about the call today. Even though I did, like, a few small exercises with you, it's about... The actions with any emotions and thoughts you do this week. Mm. And that's where the change comes from. And that's what most people don't... Like, most people are like, oh, yeah, that's great information. That's great information. And this is making you already better. No. it's like That's like saying, oh, I, I read all the books about tennis, and now I'm a great tennis player. And here's the big last tip that I'm going to give you. Your therapist, your coach has to do the practice themselves. They have to be the athletes themselves. If they don't... And also, I wouldn't personally take a coach who's fat. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. How are you going to teach me emotional fitness if you don't have the emotional fitness to go to the gym? Like, look for the fruits, so to say. Look for the things. The fruits you, and vegetables. Go, yeah. If you go to a business coach, have they done a successful business? Like, go to Alex Amozzi. Go to the people who've done the things that you want to do. Yeah. That's what I would say. I agree. So... Yeah, that's what I want. That's why I wanted to invite Marissa. To, it was an amazing conversation. I loved it. We had a good discussion. Yes. What is there, is there anything else you want to share? Um, I hope that you guys find this valuable, and I hope that even if one of you come to Stars Coaching, that wait, how do I want to word this? Oh, <laughs> and I hope that even if this gets one person to come to Stars Coaching, then he changes your life just like he changed mine.
I I'll hope that you put the video from our first call so they can see the difference. I will. Okay, the first thing that's coming up for me is that I'm scared to tell you um, what's on my mind because I feel like you're going to be like, that's just your brain and blah, 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 you know? Well, don't worry about it. I've been doing this for a long time. Star has genuinely changed every aspect of my life. And maybe I shouldn't say Star, but th these teachings are life-changing for sure. So, And you just speak about them in such an articulate way. I appreciate it. That's that. easy to understand. Yeah. I think that's also a really important thing that I really focus on is make these concepts simple. Because Einstein said it, the genius is not to make something complex yeah. more complex. It's make yeah. something complex easy. And I want you guys to know that the brain is actually easier to understand than you think. It's very simple to understand if someone explains it to you. And a lot of people are afraid to get into mental health and the brain and think, oh, no, only these experts know. I'm telling you, these therapists and psychologists, and this is not to brag, but thousands of therapists and psychologists all over the world show their clients my videos. I'm not even joking. It's just because I explain it simple and it's very simple. And people like to throw out concepts, they like to throw out labels because it sounds interesting and it pulls you in. What I want you to know is it's simple. The brain is an algorithm. The more you engage with the thoughts, the more the brain gives you. It's that simple. That's it. That's really it. And if you can remember that, that's already amazing. And Star says it in such a warm way, an articulate way, that you're like, oh, I got it. Like it clicks in people's brains better. Than I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much though. Thank you, Marissa, for coming. Thanks for having me. This is so much and fun. And yeah, I hope this helped you guys. If you want to be part of a great community where we actually talk about those things, come to the school community. The link is in the description. It's actually people. There's already over 500 people in there who go in that direction, the valued action direction, instead of venting, fixing. So it's a really great atmosphere. It's a great and community is such a great support system. And you can meet up with those people all over the world. You can find them. We're sharing things. And we have free Zoom calls on there. So the link is in the description. It's the school community. I'm there. Marissa's we there. We shared our picture from yesterday. <laughs> with that being said, I love you guys. Have a beautiful night. And yeah, do the things you value. Nice.